In this lesson, we will graph y equals cosine x, y equals sine x, and y equals tangent x over the closed interval from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees using desmos.com. We will also discuss the characteristics of each of the functions. To begin, we go to desmos.com and click graphing calculator. By default, the calculator is in radian mode. For degree mode, we click the wrench in the upper right hand corner. At the bottom, click degrees. While we're here, let's go ahead and set up the x and y axes. Because we're graphing from negative 360 to positive 360 degrees, let's have the interval for the x-axis go from negative 400 to positive 400 by steps of 90 degrees. And let's change the y-axis to go from negative 2 to positive 2 by a step of 0 0.5. Let's close this menu. Click in cell 1 and enter y equals. Let's first graph the cosine function. We can type in COS for cosine, or we can go to the Desmos keypad, click functions. Under the trig menu, we can find cosine, sine, as well as tangent. I'm going to go ahead and click COS for cosine, close the Desmos keypad, and then enter x. Notice now we have a nice graph of the basic cosine function over the closed interval from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. Notice how we have a maximum function value of 1, a minimum function value of negative 1, and the period, which is the interval it takes to have one complete graph of the cosine function, is 360 degrees. If we were going to graph this function by hand, we would focus on one period of the cosine function, typically from 0 to 360 degrees, then divide this interval into four equal subintervals, and then plot five key points on the graph. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and graph some vertical lines at x equals 0 and x equals 360. Let's change the style to dashed and the color to black. Notice over this interval we have one complete graph of the cosine function. And now let's divide this interval into four equal subintervals, which would have a width of 90 degrees. So let's also type a vertical line at x equals 90, x equals 180, and x equals 270. And again, change these to dashed and black. And now the five key points are at the endpoints of each of these subintervals. Starting at x equals 0, we have a maximum cosine function value of 1. At 90 degrees, we have a point at the midline. At 180 degrees, we have a minimum function value of negative 1. At 270 degrees, we're back at the midline. And at 360 degrees, we're back up to a maximum function value of 1. So the pattern over one period of the cosine function from 0 to 360 degrees is max, midline, minimum, midline, and maximum. Once we recognize this pattern, we can simply continue it to the right and left, or think of copying and pasting the graph to the right and to the left. Let's go ahead and turn off the cosine function and the vertical lines, and now we will graph the sine function. Let's go down to cell 7 and enter y equals sine x. Click, hold, and drag the graph to the right, and now we have a nice graph of the sine function over the closed interval from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. Notice the period for the sine function is 360 degrees. The maximum function value is 1, and the minimum function value is negative 1. So while it does have similarities to the cosine function, the pattern for the sine function is different than the cosine function. Let's go ahead and reposition this, and let's graph those vertical lines again from 0 to 360 degrees, and then cut this into four equal subintervals at 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. Now looking at the pattern of the sine function over this interval, notice how the first point at x equals 0 is at the midline. Next, we have a maximum function value, then back to the midline, then a minimum function value, and then back to the midline. So the pattern for the sine function from 0 to 360 degrees for these five key points is midline, maximum, midline, minimum, and midline. Remember, for the cosine function, the pattern over the same interval was maximum, 
midline, minimum, midline, and maximum. Now let's go ahead and turn all this off and let's graph the tangent function. Let's go down to cell eight and type in y equals tan x. And we have a nice graph of the tangent function. Repositioning this, we have the graph over the closed interval from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. And notice how this graph does not resemble the sine or cosine function. First, there are no max or min function values because the graph goes up indefinitely and down indefinitely. And also the period is not 360 degrees, it's only 180 degrees. When graphing the tangent function by hand, we typically first consider the interval from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees and then divide this into four equal subintervals. Before we do this though, remember tangent x is equal to sine x divided by cosine x. And since division by zero is undefined, the tangent function is undefined when cosine is equal to zero. So if we were to turn on the cosine function just for a moment, notice how where cosine is equal to zero, there is a break in the graph of the tangent function and the tangent function actually has a vertical asymptote where cosine is equal to zero. So this is a nice way to remember where the tangent function has vertical asymptotes. And now let's go ahead and graph vertical lines at x equals negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Notice how this marks off one period of the tangent function. And now let's divide this into four equal subintervals. So we'll now graph x equals zero, which we'll cut it in half, and then x equals negative 45 degrees, and x equals 45 degrees. And now in graphing the tangent function over one period over this interval, there are three key points that we need to be aware of. We need to know the function value at x equals negative 45 degrees, which has a function value of negative one, at x equals zero degrees, where the function value is zero, and the function value at 45 degrees, which is positive one. So now if we knew we had vertical asymptotes, at x equals negative 90 degrees and x equals 90 degrees, and we had these three key points, we simply graph the function passing through these three points and approaching the asymptotes. Because the graph goes up so quickly, we may want to adjust the y-axis. If we click on the wrench, and let's say change the interval for y from let's say negative eight to positive eight with a step of one, it may give us a better view of the graph. So again, if we know how to graph one piece of the tangent function by using these three key points and the vertical asymptotes, we can simply use this same pattern to continue the graph to the right and left, or think of copying and pasting the graph to the right and to the left. I hope you found this helpful.